Hello. Good morning from Cape Cod. I'm really happy to be here. I got a tiny microphone, by the way. Hopefully it helps the audio when I'm outside and recording. But I'm having a soul rejuvenating experience being by the ocean. Just the smells and the shells, it's really, really grounding energy for a water sign like me. And I wanted, <laughs> bottom of the deck is Queen of Cups. I wanted to do a, a card reading um, about entering June and see what we get. I think that because I'm here, I'm going to finish this video by doing a grounding exercise and I will put the timestamp for that in the description in case you want to skip to it. So it's a little abnormal to my typical flow or format for the readings. And I wanted to leave my glasses off so you could see my eyes, but it's just way too bright. So I'm sorry. Um, what I'd like to do is get a four card story about energy entering June, leading up to our new moon on the 6th. A four card story. <laughs> Nine of Cups and the Page of Cups, the Four of Cups, and the Ace of Swords. Beautiful. Okay. So we've got a lot of cups and then the Ace of Swords here. But what I heard when I was looking at these three just now was reconnection to self, reconnection to self. A lot of the times the page of cups and tarot is like interpreted as an emotional offer. The nine of cups being that emotional fulfillment and the four of cups being sort of the not here nor there contemplative energy about redirection and assessing things and it can be a little bit like dipping into positive or negative in my opinion, where it can be not very productive or it can be productive. And when it's paired with these, I feel like there's been some type of reconnection to the self where we're either equipped now to sort of like put ourselves out there more. This doesn't necessarily have to be romantic. There's a lot of ways that our needs and our emotional needs are met in our lives. Um, but it could be putting yourself out there, you know, for a number of reasons. And then this sort of confirms that. Angels say, get the bottom of the deck. It's the Page of Swords. Yeah. So it's sort of like taking this Nine of Cups, Page of Cups, Ace of Swords, Page of Swords, Different aspects of this, you know, beginner's mind, what I was talking about the other day with mastery, reaching ceilings and being initiated into a new phase of growth. We're having that surround us, you know, from multiple angles, as I see that we have different pages who have different flows about them, but they're coming in to give us dimensionality in how we express ourselves and emote. I think that's really nice. Okay, I think we're going to do three cards for obstacle as well, because there's something around, um, like I've been, oopsie, I hit the microphone. I've been talking about June being a very interesting month. I want to get obstacles for people being able to feel like they're, you know, in a space where they can handle anything that comes at them. It's kind of a weird prompt, but we're going to go with it. Mm. 
No. I need one more, please. Okay. <laughs> All right. All three were major arcana, but I guess the Queen of Cups fell out, too. So... The artist, death, and the chariot. Queen of Cups, maternal energy, Cancerian energy, loving energy, safe energy. It's very safe energy. And I think that because the, um, I don't think this was a long form reading. I think it was a short that I posted last week, but death. From the Psychic Tarot by John Holland, the 13 card transformation was in the obstacles position. And I think there's something that's challenging us because there are cycles within our own personal growth and development. And sometimes we evolve in a certain way and come back to a certain thing or whatever. But there's something incredibly new about the way that we're putting one foot in front of the other right now. And the trust that you have to command within yourself, regardless of external validation, if you're in tandem with your intuition and you're continuing to move forward in a way that doesn't deviate from that, that central point. I'm just also seeing like magnets, like if we had something pulling us from like the sternum forward, you don't have to, you know, you, it becomes more effort to try to deviate from that path of the pole. And so there's something that's just been challenging because we know that in some ways, your higher self and your destiny and your guides and the universe, you know, you can't miss what's truly meant for you type thing. But because we don't exist in a vacuum, we're being asked to trust this, allow for what seems like death to become rebirth, be creative in your generation of energy. You're generating energy through your creative visualization to attach to the way that you're moving through this transition. That's the co-creative spirit that lives within you, deciding. And I, there's also something... <laughs> Interesting, because I never really get drawn to this figure on the death card, but there is sort of a woman at the feet of the skeleton, and she's in dismay. And I think that um, our, our upsets in life come from unmet expectations right or deviations and things like that and there seems to be something around like I'm just gonna make her into this person now classically in the story of the fool the hero's journey in the in the tarot it's the emperor that drives the chariot but there's something somewhat androgynous about this figure even though he obviously doesn't have breasts and I'm feeling like it's a um alchemization into what feels like being dropped out of a, of a system or of a way of being, that could be you becoming free of something. And it might feel like expulsion or loss. And it's going to take you quickly to where it is you'd like to go now. Um, and there's just, I mean, I don't even think I think it's interesting because sometimes I talk about things, we do tarot readings, other people do tarot readings, it is what it is. But there's certain like inevitabilities about how you have to get from point A to point B sometimes. And it feels like this is one of those times where regardless of who you are or where you're at in your life and your journey, it's like this was how it was supposed to go. There was supposed to be this transformation that was very, very hard. And there was supposed to be something that flicked on like a light switch, reminding us that you can create something new. And with the chariot, I mean, I'm sort of getting these as the main story, right? The transitional moment. 
and the chariot is coming in to say that it's it's blessed and it's ready and i love that and now i'm going to shuffle out the incoming energy i'd like i'd like three cards for the incoming energy One, two, three. It's a very similar message, okay? But instead of being in this realm of heart chakra, throat chakra, as far as, you know, nine of cups, self-expression, you know, and inspiration and taking, taking what it is that we've gained from reassessments, right? And residing more deeply into the emotional body to move it forward, right? And start... I heard cutting cutting new trails and I'm seeing I don't like this because it's sort of deforestation-y but paving new paths cutting new trails it's untraveled ground and territory um, and so this takes it into the material realm you know a lot of spiritual people have a hard time reckoning with like I want to be gratuitous and like offer myself in the name of like what I believe in that type of thing but we need money it's just a fact right now. It's, it's important in this world. And there's a transition that's running in tandem with this emotional one. You can't see this, but I've just like stuck the cards into the sand to like lay them out. Um, I really like it. I want to do more card readings on the beach, on a sandy beach. But this is that left out in the cold, nowhere to go on Christmas Eve type of energy. And the magician is obviously our ability to summon and conjure in balance just the natural flow, right? And it's Rumpelstiltskin, again, in my mind's eye. You take what is and you understand that as you live and breathe, energy is coursing through you and you can open or you can shut down. You can dial that up and allow for yourself to become a greater bearing vessel for your process but it's free will and it's choice and we're realizing that and so we're this is double right five into ten what's interesting too is that this is sort of like this juvenile like it's like a beggar like energy and this is like something of like philosopher like you know it's again like a mirroring with like the two and the two and i also i keep wanting to do this <laughs> for some reason it's like it's Closing like a book, my guides just said, right? One chapter into another. What do we want to get information on now? I don't really want to say this, but um, I heard Selling Sunsets. I don't watch that. I think that's like the reality TV show. But that could be a synchronicity for somebody. Okay, so what we're going to talk about now is the biggest advice for stabilizing, although we can wrap our mind intellectually around what is happening, maybe or maybe not. I would think so. If you're watching and listening to me, we can sort of grasp it, this transitional point in our lives, whatever, however that manifests for you specifically. But there's a little bit of advice for grounding and stabilizing ourselves during this time just to leave it somewhat open-ended. One card already came out, but I'm going to get three more advice. Okay. Yes, this is interesting. I like that, um, like, I don't always feel the way that I feel today. Today, I feel like the cards are speaking in little couplets, little stories, you know. So what do we have for that? We have the Four of Swords. The Five of Swords, the Three of Pentacles, the Knight of Wands. This is obviously an ascension, right? From four to five, being withdrawn in a space of recalibrating, resting up for a battle, and then going forward, but needing to continue to, it's like, it's like two different versions of being out. But it serves a purpose because we know that four to five, you know, is going to lead to six, to seven, to eight, to nine, to ten. We want to continue moving through and a person what it's like a um in the sword suit 
we don't want to get to 10 because all the 10 swords are in the back. Yes, you do, because only then is the lesson learned and the swords can come out, right? Or that character in the 10 of swords card, not that we have that here. In fact, I haven't pulled that card in what feels like months. Only then can you be reborn. Every death is but a transformation. And so there might be some sort of reluctance to the more uncomfortable parts of what's happening in your life right now, where you're being asked to call upon, you know, this, this deep, wise sense of acceptance around, it's not perfect, but this is how it is right now. And I continue to stay in a wise mind, connecting to what I do want. And when I don't have the clarity and the answers that I want, because this is a pretty heady combo as far as like being stuck in cyclical loops, right? And I, now I'm seeing like sedimentary rock formations where you've got different laterals of mineral deposits. And this is how a lot of us are, you know, black sheeps for one reason or another, if you have um, beliefs and stuff, it's like, it will not make sense if you're not on the same level. And so I'm sort of feeling I would like for you to go a different way, little friend. Feeling like there are certain times within our own development where it does not feel like progress because it's a little bit more of, um, you just let yourself experience what it is you're experiencing. You don't try to change it. And that includes the emotions that come with it or you know the brain puzzles. It's never a good idea to fatigue yourself by thinking in circles. But of course, sometimes we do have to kind of critically reflect in order to link together, you know, the mind and the heart and the facts and the impressions and the assumptions. And it's just sort of a message about moving through that with as much patience with yourself and grace as you can summon, because we have this hot energy of collaboration coming in working with others. Again, I really like this because we already saw with the magician and the five of pentacles that we're accessing a higher level of material stability. And it's going to move quickly, but it's about being accepting, right? It's almost like a, would you like to self-sabotage again? You can if you want to, but I don't think that we want to. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull one more card as far as like, um, well, actually, I'm going to get two. I'm going to cut the deck and I'm going to take two from the center. And it's going to be the, the main theme of June. feels sort of crazy to do that. This card and this card. The main theme of June. <laughs> it's the Ace of Pentacles and the King of Pentacles. I love that. I feel like that's just an extension of what I was talking about. It's definitely a switch into anchoring. I think a lot of people have been holding different visions for changed ways of living or working or having that six of pentacles reciprocity with I give and I receive, but materially. There's been a lot of people, it's not necessarily always immediate that we can switch timelines like that, like deviate, you know, relieve ourselves out of certain processing states because that's divine timing. We want to, and we're like, oh, I get it. We have these revelations from time to time about who we are and what we're doing and what we want. And then we're like, ah, oh, I'm going to go over there. I'm going to do it this way. And it doesn't happen immediately. And there's been, um, a level of endurance and perseverance that's allowed whatever phases that have happened between here and here, between then and now, to pass. That's exciting. I love that. All right. Now I'm going to get into what I said was going to be a grounding exercise. Archangel Zedkiel, Saint Germain, and workers of the ultraviolet flame, please come in and burn off anything dark with your ultraviolet light. As we sit here or lie here in whatever position you want to be in, 
and bring the attention to the crown chakra and visualize and feel the presence of an actual crown on your head. It can be any shape, it can be any size, it can be any material. But what you're feeling is the presence of a ring around the crown. It can be tingly, cool, warm, heavy, light. When I sense into this area of my body, I find that it helps me elevate as far as the space between my vertebrae. It helps me straighten and strengthen my posture because I'm connecting to the top of my to the top of my crown and I'm allowing for what would be the points on a crown to point up, connecting with the higher vibrational energy. Just like when you're using crystal points, you point them to direct the energy. That's how they're used. And through this crown space, we're pulling down from above what appears like an egg. It's white and it's glowing. And first it passes through the soul star chakra, which is above our head. It starts here so you can begin to feel this energy coming into your energy field from above you. And the egg is opening now. And out from it is pouring a molten silver liquid light that is now moving down to merge with the top of your head or your crown chakra. And you can feel this light coming in between the different plates of your skull, moving in and around all of the muscles, fine muscles, small muscles in your face, moving in between, in behind your eyeballs, moving through the passage of your throat and down your esophagus as it reaches your heart space and creates a bloom of openness in your chest. So you're able to sit up straighter, drop your shoulders back and connect to the tingly warmth of being bathed in this high vibrational light. It is moving through all the tissues, all the muscles, all the bones in your body and allowing you to breathe space into all the areas of tightness that you hold as you sit here now. And it moves through the heart space, connecting through and through from the front of your body to the back of your body, down through your chest cavity and your abdomen, interacting with all of your internal organs. clearing through the sexual cavity in your hips, wrapping around the back and the lower back and moving into the root chakra, the pelvis. Continue to breathe as the energy moves down your legs, wrapping into the areas underneath your kneecaps, going deeply into every area and every small bone that constitutes the lower leg as it bridges with the ankle. And lastly, it is surrounding and engulfing and enveloping your feet with the same tingly warmth. As you breathe into these spaces, you might shift your body a little bit in order to accommodate the breathing that you're doing right now. And with every inhalation, 
You're breathing space and peace and presence for this silver light to reside in and around your body. And with every exhalation, you're releasing tension. You're allowing yourself to feel lighter, less dense. You're allowing for the softness of your muscles and your tendons and your bones to be both heavy and weightless at the same time as you do not hold any resistance in any area. You just observe. And from the bottoms of your feet, whether or not they are firmly planted on the earth right now, if they are, vision, envision it coming from the bottoms of the feet. And if they're not, imagine the silver light at the base of your spine, at the root chakra. And what it's doing now is it's moving through the earth to connect with her core. The energy that is bathing your body and sustaining your cells and clearing you of anything low vibrational that does not feel good is now running through every layer. My alarm went off, I'm sorry. You are now rooted and connected to the higher vibrational energies while you are anchored. I hope that was helpful. I actually did a bunch of a bunch of videos on my very long car ride out here, but I haven't had the time to connect them and edit them for the purpose of becoming one long ramble and channeling from the car. I tend to ramble and channel a lot from the car on long car trips, but for now I'm just gonna cut the deck to get one lasting energy. First card was the Seven of Swords and I immediately put it back because I was like, well, that's just not gonna be it. Seven of Swords followed by the Ace of Cups. Beautiful. Replacing any form of self-deception or the desire to deceive others for any kind of self-preservation or dishonesty is exiting. We can be rejuvenated in the fact that only aligned connections and only aligned truths within ourselves now have the place to resonate and that what we create with others and within ourselves is going to come from a place of love. And that will effortlessly bring in the stability and the pentacles that we need in order to do more of the good work that the universe knows we are trying to create. All right. Have a fabulous day.